let's go. Well, morning folks, welcome to uh, coffee and revelation. Great combination. Uh, some of you have been in touch and it, uh, you know, I'll give a shout out to a Bible study group in Queensland and to a couple of people in New Zealand. It's lovely that we're able through this means of technology just to come together just for a short time and we're going through the book of Revelation and asking what does it reveal about our world. And it, it, that may surprise some people because so far all we've done is talk about God. But that's the point. It's his world. Now we're on to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. So this is Thursday, by the way. And uh, let me just read verse 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Well, let me ask you just a very, very simple question. Do you look forward to the coming of Christ? At one point in uh, COVID, I heard sentiments a bit like, we've had enough, come soon, Lord Jesus. And there's a sense in which <clears throat> you, we want Christ to return because things are so bad. Like when you, you're in deep despair or discouragement or sickness and you just say Lord take me now but I think we need to look forward to the coming of Christ in a much more positive sense because that's the time when everything gets sorted out I suspect the second coming does not play as large a part in our lives as it should or indeed in our worship when did you last hear a sermon on it so this statement in verse 7 I think is the mission statement of Revelation it's saying to John and it's saying to the church, hey, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming. It's a bit like, uh, if you like, the Lord of the Rings films when the, the king returns in, in the battle uh, with the riders of the Rohirrim. You know, they, they're there, they've come just at the last minute. Or Gandalf when there's the attack at Helm's Deep. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've got to get into that. Especially if you're from New Zealand, because I, I, I believe that uh, I, I'm really keen to go to New Zealand because I want to see uh, Mordor and the Shire and all these other places. But the king is coming. Notice what he says. Very simple. He's coming. And again, a basic principle for understanding Revelation is every verse of it is connected with the Old Testament. So here, Daniel 7, 13. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Putin's kingdom will be destroyed. Albanese will pass away, Biden will go, Johnson will go, but there is a kingdom that is an eternal kingdom that will never pass away, and that's seen in the coming of Christ. Second thing about it is everyone will see the first coming, virtually nobody saw, very few people saw, the wise men, some shepherds, Mary and Joseph, but when he's coming in the clouds, it means he's coming in glory. So the pillar of cloud over the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Solomon's temple. Matthew 24 30 says this, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. I read in Manton this week and tweeted it out that uh, Manton says there are atheists in the church, but there are no atheists in hell. Well, people who mock God and mock Christ right now, they won't mock when he returns. Every eye will see him and every knee will bow. And for many people, that will not be a cause of celebration. It will be a cause of mourning. And that's the final point there. There's mourning and rejoicing. Zechariah 12.10, And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. When the Lord comes, 
everyone will understand what we did to him. And there will be mourning. There will be rejoicing on behalf of his people. But there will be mourning for those who do not know Christ. Which is why we want to communicate Christ and his great hope so much just now. We're going to leave you with uh, a wonderful, of course it has to be the hymn, Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for favoured sinners slain, thousand, thousand saints attending, swell the triumph of his reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God appears on earth to reign. Every eye shall now behold him, robed in dreadful majesty. Those who said at naught and sold him, pierced and nailed him to the tree, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, shall the true Messiah see. Amen. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. See you tomorrow.